If you want to be happy, it's going to have to be a lifestyle switch. And if you want to be happy, you're going to have to do the work in deep. Quick fixes become fads and diets to take back your time and live your life for you. Because if you want to be happy, it's going to have to be a lifestyle switch. <laughs> really early really early um good morning good morning good morning this is the one that we had to cancel last minute so um i told you i told you to get it in um this light is so bright first thing in the morning i'd like to say that it's the light making me look really pale but i love me factor 50 and I tend to wear a hat in the sunshine, so, and I don't, can't be asked with fake tan anymore, so I just go with the Casper look. <laughs> Rocking it. Um, so we are talking Tupperware today. Um, and we're going to jump straight in because there's quite a bit to do. <laughs> Again, I've been holding off rejigging. Normally I retweak things as I go along, but I've been holding off in lots of different areas because I knew we had this series coming up. Um, and that is really annoying me even in the shelf we're doing. So here is, I have three zones of Tupperware, three zones of Tupperware. Um, and it's not, I don't use Tupperware, Tupperware. I know we just refer to it as Tupperware these days, even though it's not, that's an actual brand. I didn't realize this. I gave away some free Tupperware online on a Facebook page and the lady got really arsy with me that it wasn't actual, actual Tupperware. And I was like, dude, it's complete. It was a really fancy, like lockable lid one. Um, and I was like, it was free. If you didn't want it, why don't you just leave it there instead of writing me arsy messages afterwards? It was free. I left it on my doorstep for you to pick up. You didn't have to. Um, <laughs> But apparently it's not, it's an actual brand. And I'm like, dude, yeah, most people would just refer to Tupperware as like anything. Anything's Tupperware now, isn't it? Um, so I don't even know what reusable containers, I don't even know what we're meant to call it other than Tupperware. But anyway, I have three zones of it because uh, we use it a lot. So we um, prep food, we prep, uh, we'll bulk prep meals. We will um, cook more than we need so that we've got overflow we can put in the freezer. We use refill larders and, and re-top up shops and things like that, packaging free shops. So we have more stuff because of that. Um, and also I will upcycle for gifts and, and things too. So we have quite intricate systems. So normally, obviously, we would categorize, minimize, organize systemize and glamorize but i'm actually going to talk more about the systems behind the tupperware to start with um so we have this cupboard here that i'm sat by is our main like big tupperware so we have two types of tupperware in here they're both glass with plastic lids and um, they're pyrex ones we have two sizes big and little and um, this is like a perfect one person meal this is obviously a bigger thing <laughs> a bigger meal um but it means they can go in the freezer, they can go in the oven. I don't know if we've ever, oh yeah, I've oven, I oven the little ones pretty regularly, actually. I don't know what I'm saying, I don't know if I oven them. Um, this one's really dusty for some reason, even though we use them really regularly. Um, they can go in the oven, they can go in the microwave, they can go in the fridge, they can go in the freezer. Um, and I found it really annoying when we were using plastic ones that I'd have to take it, I have to try and get it out of the plastic container when it was frozen to put it into something ceramic um, or glass to go in the microwave because you don't want to be microwaving your food in plastic. Um, even if you're buying, even if you're having to buy a microwave meal, put it onto your plate and microwave it where possible um, because there's just not enough studies done as far as I'm concerned yet to say that, well, there's lots of studies to say it's not safe and there's certainly not enough studies going the other way to say it is safe. Um, I do love my microwave. I couldn't, I don't think I could do life without my microwave. Like, <laughs> um, but I am not going to be putting plastic in it. I'm going to be putting these. So I found this quite good because it meant that they could go from food prepping to freezer and they can come out the freezer and um, be used straight into the oven or microwave or whatever. Um, and yeah, I really like them, I'm very pleased. And they're nice and easy and stackable. Um, we have those in here. We then have this basket, which is the bane of my life. 
Um, so this is one of those ones that attaches to the either the bottom or the shelf. You can put these on the top of the shelf, and then this is going to go tits up, isn't it? And then you get an extra shelf layer, basically. So you can put them on the top, but um, we've got quite a small top shelf, and actually use the top shelf in here for baking dishes and the such like. Um, we have a lot of them, but we do tend to use them. We are kitchen people, <laughs> like the mole people. We're the kitchen people. <laughs> I deny kitchen a lot. Um, and at the time I had one of these, I'd got one for something else. And then I'd found one in the house when we moved in, there was one already here. So I had this spare one and I've been using it and I don't, I don't like it. Does this reek Jess to you? Like, no, I do think they serve a purpose, but they're not fit. It's not fitting the purpose that I wanted it for. So that is one of the things I want to be addressing today. Um, and then at the back of here, we have lots of jugs, which I'm actually going to be pulling out because we have more jugs than we need. And I can't can't seem to bring myself to let go of them. So I we need to make some tough jug related decisions. I quite like. Yeah, I'm I'm sure of which jug. I don't, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which jug. Well, we have this gravy jug that's my partner's is absolutely ridiculous because it just leaks and doesn't pour, but it's meant to be really fancy. Um, so I'm going to pull those out in the moment anyway because they just not not working for me being in this cupboard at the very least. So maybe if we relocate them to a different cupboard, they'll give a different vibe and we might actually use them. But anyway. Um, then the next one down is in my utility room. I have two of these, um, the IKEA doobie doos. Uh, these are my favoured ones for kitchen. I have them in this size and the, where's the other one? And I have them in this size. Um, and that basically does my kitchen. Um, if I have any other size ones, I think I have one little small why Ikea one and the only reason I used that was because I didn't have any left of these and I had it left over from another project so otherwise I would just literally use these two um I like the white in the kitchen because I will put a label on the side but food items come with lots and lots of words on the bottles and I do not like lots and lots of words in my life um, I am the person that takes off labels as much as possible, even before the item is even finished. As long as, as long as I know what it is, I know it doesn't cause any allergies to my family. I'm not going to be using it for any guests. And because you can look up the ingredients online now as well, if a guest did come around and I needed to serve them something and they had an allergy, I could look it up. Um, but with food, there's so, so many new things, like a bottle of shampoo will last for such a long time that if I spend two minutes taking the label off it, it's fine. Whereas if I did that every time, uh, I can't even think, but um, every time the mayonnaise came in that I took the labels off as we were needing them, it would just be such an, a massive waste of time. And so I choose to go for the solid side. And then with bathroom stuff where I often take the labels off when it arrives in my house in the first place, I use clear. And um, I tried to stay away from plastic, but actually these are so robust and can be used for so many different things. Um, I don't think there's a single one of these in my life that is in its original purpose. They've just all been rotated around when we moved. They all got switched around and you just wouldn't know. So kitchen, utility, um, if we ever sort out our garage properly and I needed some more, I would get these for that too. Um, and then if you're, I, I just think these are brilliant. They come in so many different sizes. They're just wonderful, just wonderful. Love them, love them so much. Um, let's have some drink. So I have two of these in my utility room. And although there's quite a mixture of bits, I'm quite specific with what goes in here. So we have one plastic Tupperware, <laughs> one plastic Tupperware that just, I don't know something about it. It's just such a good size. It fits a bread roll in it really nicely. If it's a bun in it, if it's a cupcake in it, um, it's just a really nice size. So we often end up using it for the small human. And as much as I don't even know where this came from, if I'm completely honest, no idea. But it's just a size that we see. So I moved this into our um. I have a box in the garage that has our like picnic plates and things in it. 
Um, and we do keep a couple of extra plastic Tupperwares because if you're going to um, into like Legoland for the day, carrying around a load of glass containers in your bag is a nightmare. And um, and as we know, we won't be like baking or anything the food while we're there. We tend to keep a couple, so we have a little stash of like these ones in our picnic supplies um, so that we can take our own food with us, but we don't have to carry the glass. I'll carry a couple of the glass, but I just don't want to have my whole rucksack full of glass thingies. Um, and I put this in there for a while and we just kept getting it out. Um, because we're vegan and my daughter is small and gets invited to birthday parties, we often take a cupcake in here so she can have cake when everyone else has cake. Um, People are pretty good at making sure they have a vegan option, but it's a bit harder when you're doing a whole birthday cake and, and you can't make it vegan. So, um, yeah, we always make sure she has a cupcake with her. And I just, it's the size of the cupcake cases I use. I don't know, it just works. So that's the random one that I won't let go. Um, this shouldn't be in here. So that's my partner putting it in the wrong place and um, we then have a couple of like random things like little spray bottles um we we use oils a little bit not a huge amount i have a small collection of essential oils that i'll use for bits um i'll decant to go on holiday stuff like that um i might even um i use a couple of these for i put like sticky stuff spray remover or vinegar and water in to have at clients houses if i'm just doing little jobs and stuff just so i've always got one handy for cleaning so um and this is the bottle my um the hairspray that my daughter and i use we don't use an aerosol that comes in this we go through one maybe one a year <laughs> so um it's quite a handy one to keep and um, i sometimes will make up um, um, I make my own cleaning products, so I'll make up, um, if I've forgotten to do someone a present, I might make them up a multi-purpose spray as a gift. Um, I am that weirdo that turns up at people's houses with toilet cleaner as a gift, but I've made it. So I'm like, it's useful. <laughs> I'm going to take them a dying bunch of flowers. Like, yeah, I'll make them something. So yeah, that's why I kind of keep those ones. Um, these little pots I'm actually going to relocate today. So these ones are um, the face cream I use. Um, I think I've got three from the other. There's like a different, same range though. Um, it's from a company called Beauty Kitchen and they don't recycle their pots. They reuse them, which is even better as far as I'm concerned because uh, recycling uses up energy. So um, they're really cute. I would have loved to keep them and sometimes like I think maybe converting them into candles. But my first round of candle making didn't go brilliantly. And then my second round made so much mess that I haven't made any more since. I will. Um, but I have a box upstairs for returning these. It's getting fuller. So um, I was only keeping hold of these until I was about to send them back. And if I didn't use them, then I'd send them back. Um, and that's part of the system is not letting things just sit here. Uh, so I have the box of all, so all the packaging, like the cardboard boxes, they say keep because I can wrap this in it to send it back. Um, but loads of their containers are reusable, not just recyclable. Um, so I have a box upstairs and once that's full, I will drop that off. Um, I now know where to drop it off as opposed to having to post it, which is really helpful too. Um, but I thought, I, I do love this. I love the blue of it, but I haven't found a purpose for it. So it's going to go. Um, and that is part of the little, the little system. I'll have those ready to, to drop off. Um, what else have we got in here? Um, that came off something else and I wasn't sure if I was going to use it. It was only about a week ago, um, but I haven't used it. So, like, oh, actually, having said that, I now know what I'm going to use it for. Um, these, we had, these were on offer, the goo thingies, way too expensive and just not worth it at full price, but they were massively reduced, the vegan ones the other day. So we thought we'd try them. My partner said, do I want to keep the pots? I said, briefly. Um, they haven't been used. I think we've had them a couple of weeks, so they can also go. Actually, they're going to go in, in here. But I'll explain what here is in a minute. Um, so these ones, there's a soup that we love. Um, we normally make our own soups, but again, if these are on offer and they're down to like 59p, they are such a bargain. Um, and the pots are 
really handy again for pack lunches and things um i can make my little toilet fizzers and give people boxes of toilet fizzers in them and they look quite neat and smart so these ones i keep and these ones i keep these are vegan mayonnaise jars um and i will spray paint the lids plain white uh i can't reach it from here but um, you may have seen in my spice drawer before i think i showed one when we were doing the landing station declutter um, I spray paint the lids white and then I can label them or just leave them plain as gifts or my daughter can colour them in to gift them. But they're a really nice size. Um, so these are the two that I do actively keep. Um, they are the, what makes up the majority of these two boxes. The reason why the lids are off these is um, I have a little pot next to my sink um, that I save them up in until I've got a few to, to paint in one go because painting one at a time is just a pain in the bum. Is that a crack? or something stuck to it. I think it might be something stuck to it, not crack. Or is it in the recycling bin? But you can kind of tell which ones of these I cleaned and which ones my part cleaned. I can't actually tell if that's a crack or sticky tape on it. <laughs> Work on that later. Um, so we keep, we keep those. Um, that is, again, lovely, simple white. That's what I look for is if it's a really simple one. We had three of them. I guess my partner's used something. So we had three of them. They're about this size, but glass. Um, so they look quite neat and smart. They're quite, we used to mix uh, mayonnaise with different flavors. So we'd have a couple of little different flavored sauces by the mayonnaise, put some spices in, put garlic in one. Um, and then have different ones. I've used one for a little money pot in the landing station, little change pot. I'm keeping the lid until I know that I'm definitely happy with how I'm using it. Um, once that's been in place for a couple of weeks, um, I'd be like, I'm gonna continue to use the bottom of the jar. I'm not gonna need the lid anymore. I will get rid of the lid um, because I haven't got very much in these boxes. It's quite easy to spot when there's random things like that lurking about. Um, I'm just going to tidy this one up while we're here. Um, cool. Uh, we then have these ones. This is what um, the shampoo, what this is, was what. This uh, is glass, comes with my the shampoo that I was getting. Um, however, they've changed. It used to have paper labels that came off really easily. They now print on the bottle. They don't send them all out with pumps, which is great on one point, but I was repurposing these into gifts. I would go and get um, scent free bubble bath and then I would send the bubble bath myself and make them into little gifts. And with the pump, it was just really nice. Um, so I'm not sure I'm going to continue to use them. And I found another shampoo that I really like um, that is cheaper. Uh, we like cheaper. And um, so I don't know how many more of these I'll get. So I'll keep hold of this one for the moment and um, yeah, to make more gifting. So it's kind of a partly Tupperware and partly, um, I guess, present box. <laughs> Empty jars for me are like a present box. Um, and that one's staying in here too. Spare spray nozzle because um, they break. And so there's no point in getting rid of that one. You're a weird one. Somebody bought this into my house. I'm not impressed. Um, not impressed. Uh, but it's not. So I normally I'd rescue the spray, but they've got a stupid spray. I not you to do anything with it, which is always handy. Um, this pot is lots of little ones put together, but I'm actually going to decant these into the little bag. Um, so it's got my like little oil bottles. Sometimes it's so much cheaper to buy oils pre-bottled than it is to decant them, or I want a fragrance that my refill larder doesn't do um, or something. So I do have a few spares here. I have like a spare scoop, um, spare lid for um, my spices things that kind of stuff stays in here but I'm going to move it into this little bag here just checking it I'd clean it up a little bit um so I'm gonna put all of them into little into little doobie doo dub -a -dub -a -dub. um because then I can put the lid back on this one and it's ready to be used for something so um these I get 
off other people normally. Again, could be used for a candle, but usually I do homemade body scrub in them for people as gifts. Um, that shouldn't be in here. My partner put it in here. It needs to go back in the freezer. It's the lid for the ice cube tray. Um, so that's those boxes that live in the utility room. Um, part of me would like to have them in here, but doesn't quite work space wise and it's not causing a massive problem being in the utility room so they can just stay out there then we have the doom box so i don't know why but this is why i picture everyone else's tupperwares and their lives to look through this basket here is so i have a few of these i got them free on olio winning in life in different colors i got a set of four for free and they've become the recycling baskets in the garage so we have some recycling bins in our kitchen and then we have like a recycling overflow in our garage and um, that allows us to just recycle more like be more organized gather things together and um, to take those recycling bins because uh some of them are a bit f further away or you have to book an appointment for so it's nice to be able to wait until we've got a few more of an item um but what i do with this one is anything that could be reused as a tupperware-esque item be plastic be glass this one our multivitamins came in and um, looks like i'm like it's useful it's useful i could use this for something it goes into here and every two weeks i go to the refill larder and so what i will do is i will take anything that i think may be suitable for them they have to be able to clean it so as much as they sell dry goods that someone might be happy to put this in because it's going via the shop. They can't they can't do anything with this. So um, at this point, I would this would go into the recycling um, and the other items would well, I take along to the refill larder if they're able to. They need to be able to wash them themselves. They even though they can't I wash them before they go they need to be able to wash them themselves. Um, so I'll take it along. They'll take what out of the bag what they can use and I'll take the rest home and then I can recycle it. Or if there's like a lot of matching things, I might put it on Olio. Um, but sometimes it's better to get it out of the house than to let things stagnate because you're waiting to list them. That can be problematic in itself. Um, and this gives us a bit of a two week overflow of extra bits to see if we do need something um like at the moment i'm using jars i'll grab a jar from here put vinegar in it and all the metal work off a bit of furniture that i'm upcycling uh give it a good shake leave it on the windowsill for a couple of days give it another good shake leave it on the windowsill for a couple of days and it cleans it all it's um magical um now i can use my vegan mayo jars for that as well but if i've got one of these i'll use that instead um and then they go into let's say before lad might use them and if i need to think something through <laughs> and i just need a mindless activity i will scrub all the labels off these as well before they go but i don't worry about that if they're an easy peel then i will um and uh we usually keep a few of these for like cleaning paint brushes and stuff but we leave them in here again if they've when I come to do the next refill, I'll run, I'll look and I'll be like, well, there's eight in here. I'll just keep two and the rest can go on to refill order. Um, <laughs> things like this will stay in here as well because I know that they can make most of those two. So there's not a huge amount to do with that one. It was more to show you all um, what it is and the fact that, yes, I have quite a few bits. What I have discovered, so this is, Tesco's have started doing a vegan mayo that, it's it's like somewhere between a mayo and like a garlicky alio like so it's nice we're still getting mayonnaise as well um but it's 55p whereas the vegan mayo in this size is like two pounds 55 or two pounds 75 and look these are super cute paint sizes so yesterday when we did the uh, arts and crafts declutter my daughter has the squeezy mayonnaise bottles with made up paint in and i'm going to start collecting these up until i have enough to transfer her paint in or i'll transfer a couple at a time um so that she has smaller paint pots and they have pink lids which made her super happy so <coughs> we've got two already um i think there's 
at least one in the fridge. There might be two in the fridge because one was about to run out. I can't remember if I picked up another one. Um, and we'll probably use up another one in half term. And just because it's really nice, it's a bit runnier than mayonnaise. Um, and it tastes different. So it can't go with every flavor, but it's a really nice flavor. So I've been using that instead of like any kind of butter or anything. I mean, I'm vegan, so I don't use butter, butter, but um, any kind of butter. Um, I will, instead of doing a butter and a sauce, I will just do that in a sandwich or something, um, which works quite nicely. Um, and I really like it with crunchy, uh, like oven baked crunchy kale. I do like a bean thing for my lunch with it. So um, anyway, this isn't about food, um, but the pots were quite useful. But had I not spotted a use for it, I'm not just going to keep it because I'm like, it's cute. It has a pink lid. There is a use for it. I'm not just going to keep it because of that. Now, something like this is a lot of plastic. These things are very hard, if not impossible to recycle. Um, so uh, this might be something that I would Olio um, because it's gonna be very difficult to recycle. Olio is an app you can give away and get stuff for free. It can be food items, makeup items, stuff that's opened. And um, there's limits around like use by dates and stuff like that. But other, it doesn't matter if it's been opened and half consumed or makeup that's been half used. There are people on there that will still use it. They can sterilize it. They can do other things with it. Um, and this would be the kind of thing for me that I would wait an Olio because it is so much plastic and so hard to recycle. However, I have found a purpose for it. So I will save those up until I've got six and then I will do the decanting um, unless... I just fancy a bit of positive procrastination and then I do that. But right, so we need to sort this cupboard out. This is the one that's been bugging me. Um, so we've got the two sizes of two sizes of Tupperware and with this basket thing taken out, I know that all the small ones will stack on top of each other. Um, I want to pull these jars out and then the big ones I know will stack on top of each other. I know a lot of them are in use. It's very rare we have all of them in the in the cupboard in one go. Um, but it's always good to make sure that you can fit everything in your cupboard in one go. If it happens to have one day where everything is clean all at once um, and doesn't happen very often. But I do know that if I have all of those, they will fit all on top of the thing. Um, so I'm gonna pull these jugs out because I want to put them somewhere else slash review which ones of them we actually need. Um, that is my daughter's lunchbox again. Haven't really used that one in a long time. Um, so I will discuss with her if she's ready to let that go. Or I think I know somewhere that that might be quite useful to have. Anyway, um, so we've got the tool. The small and the big and then the Tupperware things. Now these beautiful fold dividers, this is what I've been thinking would probably be the solution to this problematic cupboard. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't completely decided yet. I've bought two down. I actually have three of them. I'm now thinking I might need all three. Um, three for two pounds, Facebook Marketplace. I mean, you can get them everywhere. They had some nice ones in Dunelm Mill, like some solid metal ones. Um, I would say the metal over the cardboard. I know I used a cardboard one for my arts and crafts, but again, it was free. I wouldn't buy cardboard ones of these. Um, metal, I think it's better because then when it gets, it's it's more resilient, but also if it gets a bit beaten up, you can make it look like you with a spray paint can so easily. And then you can make it tie into whatever decor color you like so easily. <laughs> um, so we, we like that. Um, and it doesn't have to go that way up. You can also use it that way. Um, they're quite good for protecting clutch bags as well in your wardrobe. You can put clutch bags in them too. Um, so they are multifunctional, multifaceted little superstars. I need to decide what I'm going to do with them. Because they fit like that. That's the kind of thing I was sort of thinking. Um, and then doing the bags in another one. I guess lids is always a big one. So I know I'm one big lid short. I have, but there's no point in me getting rid of the bottom Tupperware because 
it's so useful and um, sometimes we have things that just need a base in the fridge they don't need to be covered um so there's no point in us getting rid of that so we keep those um but it's how i think i'd better to be in sideways but i know so i can't use a third but what you can do with some of these so i don't know if you can see on the cupboard angle sort of can and um, so down here even though I can't fit a third organizer in, I've kind of made a mini one by having a gap between this one and the wall. So you make your own third space. Um, I mean, we did the same with the junk drawer. We had two boxes that butted up and it made a third dish space because there was a gap between. Um, so that is one of the options, particularly for the big ones that tend to stay upright quite nicely by themselves, that they could go there. That is probably what I'm thinking um i will do and then i've got one of them one of these and it's going to play up do i want to put it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. lid ones oh the lid ones work best but work well both ways it does give more space behind get things out right let's get these down and see which one's going to work better and um, this has gone a bit funny um so most of these go in uh, a matching set we have three types this one with a little thingy one slidey bit um we have small blue and we have a big orange um we get loads of our veg and frozen portions in these as well um and then i have all the historic old ones that have been reused multiple times and you just hit a point where you've got to be like yeah this this falling apart paper bag am i really going to use it again no probably not so that can that can go um this was a, a bread bag and um, has been used three or four times <laughs> since it was a bread bag but i feel like that is time for that one to go um that was like a resealable um granola one but i've got enough of those that can go and um, that can go we've got these bad boys and Hmm. To have lost most of the sliders for them. That's not good. So these have these plastic do this is why I've stopped buying these ones. They're quite good because they have measurements on them and they will stand up like soup ones. They've got wider bottom, so they are quite good for freezing soup and liquid sauce ones in pouches, but in theory, they're quite good for that, but we just didn't find we used them enough for that. We used to use them a lot for when we did stock. And um, when we used to eat chicken, we'd make a bit like a stock with it. Um, our attempts at making vegetable stock have not been great and we can get stock powder, the refill larder. So um, we just started doing that, to be honest. <laughs> it was always smelling a bit like old feet. <laughs> no one wants to drink old feet flavored stock. Um, and then we have a few extra little carrier bags for one-off things that we'll use up as people need them. This, these ones are also quite useful. Fun, fun cleaning facts, just as super cleaning tips. So you get, this one's got a hole in, so this can't actually be used for it. But if it didn't have a hole in it, you fill it up with vinegar and you put your shower head in it and then you put an elastic band around the top so you don't have to detach your shower head or anything. And then you leave it overnight and um, you just sort of hang the cable of the shower head down towards the bottom of the shower tray and leave it in that. Um, and it will work magic. It will really freak you out how much gross dirt is left in the bag when you take your shower head out, but better in the bag than it is in the shower head. Um, but that works quite well. But um, we tend to keep these four uses. However, at the moment, the thing I'm most likely to use these for is um, paintbrushes that I've used that I need to use in a few hours' time and I don't want them to dry up, so I'll wrap them up in a bag. So I'm going to take out anything from here that can be used for that and put it with my paint brushes instead otherwise i will forget i've got it that's not suitable um, 
That is beautiful. What else have we got in here? Okay. I think you just get like bits of cling film that we reuse because um, cling film's horrible, but they've obviously not been reused for quite some time. Like we found ways of working without it, so they are a bit gross. So I think it's probably time they left. What ones else have we got here? It's big enough for a paintbrush. It's too small. That's too small. Um. So I haven't bought sandwich bags for many many years and we still have a full bag's worth because once we decided we didn't want to use them anymore we just had loads that we never got around to using so we keep them there's no point like throwing them out as such we've got the space for them if we ever didn't have the space for them i put them on olio because we are it's going to take us a long time to use them up and um, so those are going to go to where my paintbrushes are and then we're left with the three types of these. I'm still undecided which way around I want to put this. But at the very least, we can make it. What? We'll go in. There we go. I think I'm going to go upright like that because the these things that have run away already in so many cases. Can then go in um, and then we've just got this little overflow one so how am i gonna get you in so i think we'll move these ones forward and then there's a little space at the back for them um, i'm gonna take this out because it's just becoming a bit of a catch-all for random ones which I don't want, and this is a much neater, so I can keep that, let's pop that down the back, still there if we do need it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, I don't, mm, can't quite, how do I show you? Let's take you off here. Oh, Come off the back here, there we go. There we go, there we go. I don't know if I can turn, right? Turn the camera around very easily. Camera. Just trying to rot rotate you. Right, let me do this. There we go. So this is where we're at with the cupboard. So this top bit I'm not dealing with today. It's not an issue. It's a non-issue. So we've got this space here. And this one could go in here. Um, but what I actually like the idea of is framing the cupboard and putting one on each side. So you have to sort of just think through the space of here. And I wonder if you can spot 10, goal, 10 points to Gryffindor, if you can spot what I might think is an issue here. Yeah, I don't know if you spotted it, but it's this door handle here. So this is going to make friction trying to get these out, like metaphorical and physical friction getting this out. So let me move some stuff out of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch through that one in there. These ones can then go there. And this one can go up against there. And that's going to be less problematic because nothing is going around that bit there. And then, oh, yeah, suddenly there's a lot more space there for the other lids because there's quite a few that are in use at the moment. Um, beautiful. So normally we had all the jugs that are now there. They would go uh, at the back and they might go back there, but I'm going to put them out on the counter and make a bit more of a informed decision opposed to leaving them in there the one thing i've realized i haven't put in here is um, my daughter has a little metal tin it's about the same size as this that she uses for snacks so what i'm probably going to do is just push these back slightly Oops, i'm going to do one pile like that and then her metal tin's got a home there actually this is this goes in it but this is much smaller than it but it's in that there. So it would fit, would fit there. Beautiful, B-E-A-utiful. 
Right. Now I've got to remember how to turn this camera back around. Front camera. There we go. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, sending me into settings. There we go. Um, and that's Tupperware. I mean, do you have a thing? If you've got lots of Tupperware that doesn't have lids, like I said, I've got that one dish and that works quite well without its lid. So that doesn't really matter. Um, it's having the system where you don't hold on to things past the chances that you find something useful to do with them. Um, it's making sure that you're being realistic with you. There's a real sound. I used it um, uh, with, I think I was showing my cleaning products in it. It was about a jar. It's like, oh, I found this jar. <gasps> I'm going to keep it. It's going to be useful. And then the other voice says, what? What are you going to use it for? What is it going to be useful for? So you need to be that voice to yourself. Like, what is it actually going to be helpful for? Um, now, if you are just about to bark on a big decluttering mission, keeping lots of things containers wise is probably going to be quite useful. You can see I have this whole stash that I keep hold of that I use in my house or I take to clients and things houses to do bits with so that we don't have to buy anything straight off the bat. But unless you are about to declutter your whole house and redo your whole house or you do it for a living, you probably don't need to keep such a backstock of pots and jars and things. Um, so be realistic with yourself of what you will actually use, what is actually going to get used. Um, have a have be that little voice in your head saying, for what? What are you going to use this for? Um, and if you've got a project, make sure you've like earmarked it. So these two little bad boys, I'm going to find a home for them in the garage, in their own pot, so they're ready. Um, in fact, I spotted this should be. Yeah, so I need six of these. This box will exactly fit six of these in. So I can leave this somewhere out of the way, but poignant. <laughs> um, so out of the way, but in the way, so I can see it. Um, and I'll remember like once this box is full, I've got enough for my project. I can get on with my project, if not before. Um, and all the little paints will fit in here. And it's also helping me downsize my daughter's arts and craft stuff um, as well. But had I not come up with a solution for these next time I emptied my red basket, they would go. Um, and it's having those kind of deadlines in place. So um, yours might be like for mine is the refill lot every two weeks. Um, we have our recycling um, collection is every other week and then they do our rubbish every other week in between. Um, so that could be your trigger point. You could set an alarm. It could be the first of the month, but have in place a time when you are going to clear out because this is you're just storing rubbish otherwise. It might be clean rubbish. It might be clean rubbish that you've taken the labels off, but you are just storing rubbish. Like the red box, I do view this. This is a box of rubbish. It's clean rubbish. It doesn't smell. <laughs> Maybe it's got a use, but in this basket, it doesn't really have a use. Um, so I need to be willing to hit a point where I am going to let the red box items go. Um, Otherwise, it's just going to pile up and we're going to end up looking like hoarders. I have started watching hoarders on, um, uh, I think it's on Amazon Prime from season three, the American hoarders. Um, and it's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking that someone didn't try and step in sooner. Till I mean, there was one lady, they lost their house, had to be demolished because it got so bad. Um, and it just like the rubbish was eating away at the house. So I'm really hoping that no one on here is place is quite that bad but my heart breaks for them I found it a really interesting program though um, I'm like I want to go and clean it um but I now have a clean Tupperware cupboard organized Tupperware cupboard um hopefully I've inspired you to go and do yours we have is this number eight Phil's number eight we have two left to do so we've got the fridge which there was something I wanted to get for my fridge declutter but I haven't been able to find um because they had them they had them in little for a while super cheap um and they vanished so um might have to go into home bargains or something and see if they've got them in there um but also realize we're in a eating down our fridge phase which is very empty um to organize so that one will be fun um but yeah we do kitchen kitchen uh gadgets kitchen gadgets I think later today, I think that might be in an hour or so today. Um, 
and then we've got the fridge one still to come so do watch these back i am slowly getting them uploaded onto youtube as well uh have an amazing day stay motivated stay focused on your top three priorities and i will see you soon ta-ta for now